of the biggest questions in the market is just how effectively all of the oncoming hard rock projects can be converted by existing and announced conversion plans. In recent times, we have developed a good understanding of brine projects, their challenges and ramp up rates. However, the same cannot be said for the conversion plant market. This is particularly important considering that an increasing volume of the short-term growth in the market will be accounted for by hard rock projects. In the following study, we uncover three key factors that impact the feasibility of conversion plant capacity announcements that will ultimately determine just how much of the hard rock projects are going to be converted. In 2017, a significant volume of the new hard rock projects came online. As a result, we learnt a lot about the conversion plant market. One of the biggest things that we learnt was there's a significant difference between nameplate capacity and effective actual capacity. And there are two key factors that contribute to that. The first is that in the past, nameplate conversion capacity has often been inflated. And this has been moderated down by some of the key conversion plants during the year. The second factor that has contributed to this inflation is that sometimes the conversion plants are in a stage of commissioning with new feed and as a result that capacity is not available. In our recent research we've discovered that between 2010 and 2016 the utilization rates of the plants was approximately 60%. In 2017, over 100,000 tonnes of spodumene concentrate was imported by China. This excludes DSO. However, considering that recent utilisation rates were 60%, this is not feasible that all of these imports were converted, as it would have required the conversion plants to operate at a utilisation rate of over 90%. As a result, it is clear that a bottleneck exists. With our analysis, we believe that approximately 80,000 tonnes of these imports was converted, resulting in over 20,000 tonnes of unprocessed material. To get a good understanding of how the conversion plant market has evolved, we took a look back at its history, which dates back as far as the 1950s, when over 20 spodumene and lipidolite plants were in operation. They were largely small batch processing operations which were vertically integrated. They had small capacities of around 2,000 tonnes, which meant that the total capacity was around 40,000 tonnes. However, when more cost-competitive Chilean brine entered into the market around the 2000s, around 30,000 tonnes of this conversion capacity was forced out of the market, leaving approximately 10,000 tonnes in operation by 2003. This capacity was composed of plants that had existing supply agreements with Greenbush's 6% grade feed. Shifting forward from 2003 to 2008, and the lithium price tripled from around 2,000 US dollars to approximately 6,000 US dollars, re-incentivizing these plants back into the market. Any of the new capacity that was added was done so by bolt-on additions. Therefore, the market grew from an inefficient base. And the key takeaway is that up until 2008, none of the new capacity that was bought online used new technology. And therefore, we were expanding an inefficient base. We wanted to get a good understanding of how these plants were actually performing. We took a look at what their production was. You can see in the chart on the left that around 50% of the new capacity that was added between 2003 and 2008 was composed of conversion plants who were intending to process Chinese domestic sources and the other 50% of green bushes. However, over 90% of the production was from conversion plants using green bushes feed. So clearly, the quality of the spodumene concentrate or lipidolite that is being used by these plants is important and has a big impact on utilisation rates, which is represented by the chart on the right. You can see that those using a 6% feed were operating at around 47% and those using mixed feed but predominantly Chinese domestic was operating at 8%. So. Feedstock is clearly very important. 
taking these learnings of how the conversion plant market has evolved over time, we have a look at the most recent history between 2012 and 2017. During this time frame, around 212,000 tonnes of capacity was announced to come online into the conversion plant market. However, you can see that less than a third of that actually came online. So we wanted to get a good understanding of what the key factors were that actually drove that. You can see on this slide that a significant volume of the capacity to come online in 2017 was announced on the basis of a huge volume of hard rock projects coming online during this time. There was also an underestimate of the challenges involved in commissioning, constructing and scaling these operations using new, unfamiliar and or mixed feedstock. This is demonstrated by both the capacity and more so the production that actually occurred by feed in 2017. On the chart on the right, you can see that those using Greenbush's feed were operating at a utilisation rate of around 77%, which is higher than the past and is the product of 10 to 15 years of experience with Greenbush's feed. Meanwhile, those using Australian hard rock or the new Australian hard rock and Chinese domestic sources was operating at just 47%. In addition to feedstock, what are the other factors that have an influence on project feasibility? We took a look at experience and clearly you can see it plays a part. Shangxi had the greatest success in achieving its guidance in terms of capacity announcements with 80% of the expansion it actually achieved. Another thing to note is that no new entrants successfully entered into the conversion plant market during that time. The only new entrant being Albemarle did so via an acquisition and abandoned their plans for a greenfield project in China. So feedstock and experience are both important. The final thing that we wanted to have a look at was project timelines. We took at the three key players which advised expansions in the past and or for the future. Shangxi's Quinana plant is seen as a benchmark and you can see that it has a four year timeline. We consider that to be the minimum. When you take into consideration past and how the conversion plant market has evolved over time, you can see that there is a number of factors and we've actually distilled over 10 factors that influence the success of these expansions down to just three. And these are time, feedstock security and experience. You can see on the following slide the impact of risking on the basis of these three factors. The first row, you can see an unrisked version and there is a lot of challenges that would be involved as a result of the huge proportion of the announcements being composed of those who are independent players and new producers. So when you take a look at the bottom row there, you can see the impact of risking. Only 54% of the projects announced are actually in the construction and commissioning phase, which is where these projects should be at to be able to come online by 2020. We've applied risking factors of 80% for vertically integrated and 50% for independent, and then 85% for existing producers and 40% for new producers. On the basis of time, integration and experience reduces 307.5 thousand tonnes of capacity to 97.5 thousand tonnes of capacity. And this represents a success rate of 32% over three years, compared with 30% over five years between 2012 and 2017. Another important thing to note is that over 200,000 tonnes of hard rock is expected to come online between now and 2020. However, our risking methodology results in a conversion plant market of only 97.5 thousand tonnes of capacity. Clearly, an improvement in the performance of conversion plants is required to allow all of these hard rock projects to come online. So, in summary, the three key factors are project progress, feedstock security and experience. Applying these risking factors reduces 307,000 tonnes of capacity to 97.5 thousand tonnes to come online between now and 2020. To bring supply up in line with baseline demand, a very prompt improvement in the performance of conversion plants is required.